Good morning YouTube! Restoring a car it can be a long, sad and lonely business and at some point you might find yourself just feeling like you want somebody to talk to. If that's how you feel at the moment then don't worry because I am here to help. I mean, don't bore me with your problems, I'm not interested, but I am going to show you today how you can make an interface cable like this so that you can talk to your car's ECU and you never need to be lonely again. Now the Elan uses a modern computer control fuel injection system in which various sensors around the engine report information to an electronic control unit which is in here behind the glove box and the ECU takes the information from those sensors and uses that to control the fueling and the ignition for the car. But it does a couple of other things as well. It's also capable of logging any faults that it sees with the sensors or with the engine and it's also capable of streaming the data from the sensors in real time to a connected laptop and those two functions are really really useful for diagnosing any engine fueling or ignition problems that you may be having. Now a really kind man called Alan McNichol has written a really nice piece of software called Elanscan which is freely available which enables you to interrogate the ECU and see those real-time trouble code and streaming data and that's what you were looking at in the laptop clip at the start. So the only other thing that you need is an interface cable to connect the laptop to the ECU which is what this is and that's what we're going to be making today. This is the connector that we need to plug into to read the engine data. To stop it dangling around loose like that, normally it is plugged into a clip which is screwed to the front bulkhead. So if you reach up behind the glove box there, maybe get a torch, you'll find it plugged into that dummy clip and you just need to gently ease back this locking clip there and then you'll be able to slide it out. It is a 10 pin Vauxhall Opal OBD connector. Now this type have been superseded now, so the more modern type of diagnostic car scanners won't plug into here, they won't fit. Um, if you look closely at it, you'll see that each of its 10 terminals are labelled with a letter. Hopefully you'll just about be able to see this, but if not, just look at your own or take my word for it. Start. The other thing you notice is that not all 10 terminals are connected. There's only four wires actually connected to the terminal. So starting with the, what is it, the top right as you're looking at it, where my thumb is there. The black lead, that is the earth lead, and that goes to terminal A. Hopefully you can just about see there's a terminal A just marked at the top of my thumb there. Next door to it is a white lead, that's in terminal B. Then C, D and E are unused. Then if we flip it over, there's a purple there's a lead connected to F and an orange lead connected to G and all the other terminals are unconnected. Now the data is streamed down that orange terminal, terminal G. So it's that terminal that we need to connect to the laptop in order to stream the data to the laptop and then the circuit will be completed by connecting the earth terminal back to the black lead there, terminal A. So it's terminals A and terminals G, the orange and the black wires that we're going to connect up to the computer. So to make your interface cable, you're going to need about 12 pounds worth of parts that you can buy off eBay. You're going to need to do a bit of soldering, so you'll want a soldering iron, and you'll also find a multimeter or a test light useful. Now if all this looks a little bit too much for you and you don't fancy doing it, then it's okay. You can buy interface cables already made up. There's a guy on the lotusalandcentral.com forum called Jeff Smith and if you get in touch with him he sells interface cables complete. Now they're about £50 each I think and although I haven't used one myself they look really professional um, whereas this one that we're going to make today it'll always look a little bit like you've made it yourself but it will work. The first thing that you're going to need to buy is one of these, which is a connector cable. One end is our 10-pin Vauxhall Opal type diagnostic connector that we have on the car, and then the other end of this is a 16-pin OBD2 type, a modern type of diagnostic connector. These are about £6 each, including postage and packing in the UK off eBay. This is what you're looking for, and um, this is where I got the one that you're looking at from. This place was good, it arrived within a couple of days, but obviously there are other vendors available. Now when you get this, if you have a modern type of OBD2 type uh, scanner that will connect to that socket, you might be tempted to just plug this end into the car, plug your existing scanner onto there, and see if you can read the engine data straight away without needing to do anything else. Now good luck with that, I mean it won't do any harm, but it probably won't work either because the data format will be wrong. Uh, my, my OBD2 scanner certainly doesn't work with this connector. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to cut that OBD2 connector off. So we're going to leave the 10 pin box or local socket and all the cable that we need. But we're just going to cut that connector off the end and then we're going to solder a new fitting onto the end of here. There you go. 
Now the next thing that you need to buy is one of these, which is an FTDI FT232RL serial to USB data converter. Got that? And this is what you are looking for. They're widely available on eBay or through any other electronic stockist. Now, without getting too technical about it, what the, the car is streaming data in what's called a serial format, but most modern laptops don't have a serial connector anymore. So what this little chipset is going to do is convert that serial data coming from the car into a USB format that can be read in by a USB port on the computer. Now, there's various different types of things available to do that conversion, but this is the one we're using, this little FTDI chipset. When you snip the OBD2 connector off the end, peel back the sheathing a little bit to expose the wires, and then we need to find which one of these wires is connected to which of these terminals that we need. So remember that the terminals we need to connect to are this one, which is terminal A, which had the black wire going to it on the car, and then the other one we need to use is terminal G, this one here. So as you're looking at it, it is second from the right on the top row, and that's the one that had the orange wire going to it. Now, on the cable, the, there'll be a black wire, that will almost certainly be the ground wire going to connector A. But you'll have to just go probing with the multimeter to find out which one is connected to terminal G. Now in this case it turns out that it's this brown wire. And so just to confirm that, with the multimeter on the resistance range setting, we've got the negative probe connected to the G terminal inside the connector there. And then if we just put the positive probe onto the brown wire, you can see there we've got continuity between G and the end of the brown wire. So just do that the same for your connector and then also confirm that the black wire is in fact connected to terminal A. And it's those two wires that we're going to solder to our FTDI chip. Now if you look at your FTDI chip you'll see that it's got six legs and those of you who didn't do too much masturbating as children might be able to see that they are labelled, if you just look really carefully on the top there. For the rest of you, I'll read them out, they are labelled from left to right DTR, RX, TX, VCC, CTS and GND. GND is ground so we're going to connect the black wire on our connector cable to that terminal, the ground terminal, the one on the right hand side as you're looking at it and then we need to connect the data line, the brown cable on our connector cable to both the RX and TX channel. So what we're going to do is solder that brown wire on the connector cable to the RX pin here, the second from the left as you're looking at it, and then we're just going to solder a jumper wire in between the TX terminal, the third from the left as you're looking at it, and the RX terminal, the second from the left as you're looking at it. And it's late October here and I hate this time of year because I never seem to be enough light for what you're trying to do, or video for that matter, but hopefully you can just about see that the brown wire now is soldered across the RX and the TX terminal. So now all we've got to do is solder the black wire to the ground terminal. Then just tape off the ends of the unused wires and just check you've got continuity, just check your soldering. So with one end of the multimeter on the appropriate terminal, G in this case, just check you've got continuity to the terminal you've just soldered on the FTDI chip. So there you go, that's all good on both the receive and transmit. And then the final thing you're going to need is just a USB to mini USB connector cable. Um, so it's a regular USB that plugs into the computer on one end and then this little mini USB connector on the other end. It's sometimes called USB-B is the other name. And these are, these are beans, these are less than two pounds. I'd imagine most of you are familiar with these, but in case there's any doubt, it's that that you're after. So the only other thing is to connect the mini USB on the cable to the port on the other end of the FTDI chip and that's it. Um, when you're handling the FTDI chipset by the way just beware of static, just ground yourself periodically, don't shuffle around on a nylon carpet while you're doing this because static could damage the board. But that's it, that's ready to, we can now install the land scan and the drivers and then just test this on the car. You can get a land scan from a number of places on the internet, but we might as well get it from the guy who actually wrote it. So go to www.alanmcnicol.dsl.pipex.com forward slash m100 underscore aldl dot html. There is no H in nickel, you'll notice. So anyway, there you go. And that takes you through to Alan's page where you can download the software. Download either version. The beta version here works perfectly well. So... And then just save that to a place where you can find it. 
and then it's an executable file so you don't need to install it you just run the software by double clicking on that icon before we can use our interface cable and LAN scan though we need to install some drivers for the FTDI chip so go to www.ftdichip.com forward slash drivers forward slash vcp.htm and there you'll find the current drivers for your computer. Now obviously I don't know what operating system you're using but whatever you're using there are a series of excellent installation guides which cover just about all the options there if you get stuck. However, I guess most of you will be using Windows so we'll briefly look at how you would do that. If you're using Windows 10 the easiest way of installing your drivers is to just run that set of executable um, directly from their website. If that doesn't work or if you're using an earlier version of Windows then you can download the drivers and run them manually. So click on the driver that you need, save as, we'll just put them on the desktop for now and they'll download and then just extract those to the same location and you can see it's uh, extracted the drivers now at that point you can plug in your device plug in your interface cable into a spare USB port when you do that it's quite likely that Windows will start trying to look for the drivers uh, automatically um, and you can just leave that running it may well find drivers and install the device successfully if it doesn't install the drivers automatically then we're going to have to do it manually with those drivers that we just downloaded so I'm just plugging the interface cable into a USB port now and we see that it's trying to install the driver software now what we're going to do, I'm going to just stop that yeah we'll skip that so I've deliberately stopped Windows installing the drivers for the FTDI chip automatically there just to show you what to do if you do have a problem with the automatic installation or if you just want to check that it has installed correctly so go to control panel hardware and sound and then the device manager and then if you look down here under the device manager you'll see that under other devices we've got FT232R USB UART which is our FTDI chipset and you can see this yellow exclamation mark icon by the side of it because it hasn't installed properly and obviously it hasn't installed properly this time because I stopped it doing it but if you see a yellow exclamation mark like that then what you need to do is select the device right click on it to bring up that menu and then go to update driver software browse my computer for software and then go to that location wherever you extracted your drivers to OK and click OK in there click next and there we go that's installed part of the drivers that we need for the FTDI chipset so we'll close that so down here we see look we've got a new entry under USB controllers USB serial converters that's going to convert a serial data from the car to a USB format but we still have a yellow exclamation mark by USB serial port under other devices so we just need to repeat that process so just right click on USB serial port under other devices and repeat the process update the driver software if incidentally if you right click on anything with an exclamation mark like that and this menu doesn't come up you only get I think it's scan for hardware changes and properties you've got these three bits missing that means that Windows is trying to install the driver through Windows Update so there's nothing you can do about it just leave it chugging away for half an hour while you go and have a cup of tea and then come back when it's failed to do it but anyway assuming you can see the full menu there go to update driver software and it's exactly the same as we did before browse my computer for driver software go to wherever you extracted your drivers to click next there you go it's done it okay so we'll close that and now you see that all our yellow exclamation marks are gone uh, USB serial converter has installed the other devices thing is gone but we've got a new entry now which is USB serial port brackets COM5 now in this case it's COM5 yours could be COM anything it's whatever the next available COM port is now make a note of that number because we'll need that when we open the LANSCAN software so if we just start a LANSCAN and run it we need to in the setup set the com port so under here we've got port and we our USB serial controller is on com5 okay click okay for that and that is it 
So now you've got the software and the virtual COM port set up correctly, the only thing that remains is, gentlemen, start your engines, please. Press start talking. And you'll see that the data is being streamed to Elanscan in real time there. If you want to log the data so that you can record it and analyse it later, then press start logging and that's now being recorded. You can export it to Excel, do all sorts of things. When you are happy with that, then press stop talking and you can just graph up your data. Turn the engine off and... plot all sorts of interesting things against one another. Oh. There you go, and you, you'll get the idea, it's all pretty straightforward. If you do have any problems, then one thing that some people find they need to do is go back into the device manager, if you're having communication errors, and then in your ports, in here, some people find they need to change the latency for their virtual COM port. If, I'll explain what we mean. Go to properties, go into port settings and advanced and in there is a thing called the latency timer. Some people find they need to reduce that down to as low as one millisecond. I must say I never have done but that's one thing to try if you are having problems with communication. If you are having any problems either with getting the um, software or your interface cable to work or if you're having trouble understanding what the data means then try the Lotus Elan Central Forum they're a really friendly and helpful bunch on there and there's a mine of information in the forum the other thing is try the wiki uh, wikilec which contains all the trouble codes so once you've got your trouble codes you'll at least be able to tell what they are but I think it's all pretty straightforward anyway on you go good luck so that's it the only other thing to think about is how to protect it so that it's robust enough that it won't get damaged in use I mean at the very least wrap some insulating tape around it to protect the electrical contacts or preferably put it in a little enclosure. I've made this one for a friend and I'm going to do the same with this one that I did with my own which is to encapsulate it in fiberglass resin so get a little pot, a little plastic pot, mix up some fiberglass resin dunk the whole thing in it and just leave it in there until it sets and that way it's obviously very robust it'll never get damaged in use obviously the big downside with that is that if it ever does stop working you can't really get at it anymore to fix it so you obviously make sure it's working first before doing that but anyway you'll figure something out it's entirely up to you it's your connector enjoy using your LAN scan good luck thanks for watching see you next time there you go Chris that is the finished item which is in the post and on its way to you and when it arrives you can either Either use it as an LAN scan interface or as a butt plug or even as both simultaneously if you want whatever turns you on.